Passive income is the best type of income you can make. Why? Because you can literally pay a 0% tax rate. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how. So here's the scenario. This is Bob and Bob is a hardworking US taxpayer who earns $70,000 per year from his W2 job. But Bob is smart. So he invested a portion of his savings and as a result, Bob now earns an extra $20,000 per year in passive income. But now he's wondering, hey Sean, with all of this new passive income, how is it going to affect my taxes? And so Bob used the link down in the description below to book a consultation call with me to learn all about it. So in this video, I'm going to walk him through or you through how passive income is taxed. I'm also going to share some more passive income ideas, and then I'm going to give him a strategy or you a strategy on how to completely avoid passive income taxes. So if you are excited, make sure you like this video while the intro plays. Hey there, and welcome to the channel. I'm Sean with Life Accounting, the accounting company that helps you save on taxes and build more wealth. All right, let's go ahead and start off by making sure we're all on the same page with number one, what is passive income? I'm going to be quick and straightforward because I've covered this before. So if I was on a consultation call with Bob, then I would tell him that according to IRS publication 925, passive income is classified into two categories. Number one, a business or trade activity that you do not materially participate in. And in general, material participation can be summarized as a business or trade activity where you are working more than 500 hours in or you are substantially involved in the operations. The second type of passive activity defined by the IRS is number two, any rental activities, even if you materially participate, except for activities that fulfill your duty as a real estate professional. So passive activities can be things like leasing equipment or other assets, rental real estate property, limited partnerships, businesses or farms where you as an individual do not materially participate. And you can be involved in all of these passive activities without working simply by investing money. Now, really quick before I move on to number two, here's a very important note, which is, okay, there's a lot of people, especially on YouTube, who make videos about passive income, but they're just using that phrase for the views and for the clicks. A lot of them are actually making active income. So now that you understand the true definition, you can better spot out all these imposters. Cool. Now that we're all on the same page, let's move on to number two and talk about how passive income is taxed. So passive income is favored much better by the tax system when you compare it to other income sources, which is often referred to as active income, which of course is money that you make from actively working, right? That's going to be your W-2 income, your 1099s, or your other self-employed income. So during my meeting with Bob, what I would do is pull up this chart and explain that the passive income that you earn every month or every quarter, or basically any passive income that you earn within a year is taxed at a short-term capital gains tax rate, which is basically the same tax rate that you would pay at the federal level on your active income. So there's not a lot of things that change when you start making passive income in the short term. However, if you hold on to your passive income longer than a year, then it will be classified as a long-term capital gain and then things start to get interesting because as you can see, depending on your income level, you could pay a 0% tax rate on your long-term capital gains. But even at the highest tax bracket, you can almost cut your tax payments in half simply by holding on to your passive income or your passive asset for more than one year. And I've literally seen people come to me who made money in stocks and crypto pay more in taxes than they need to simply because they didn't hold on to the asset for more than one year. So if we looked at Bob's scenario from earlier, his W-2 income of $70,000 will put him in the 22% short-term capital gains tax bracket. 
But with his passive income of $20,000, that would push him into the 24% tax bracket. So knowing this, during the consultation call with Bob, I'm going to ask him a very important question, which is, okay, do you need the extra $20,000 in passive income now, or could you delay it to save more money in taxes? What would you do? Tell me down in the comment section below. I'm super curious to know. Now, this leads me into number three, more passive income ideas. So since we didn't really clarify how Bob made his passive income, I want to give you three quick ideas. Number one, you can open a high yield savings account. With all of this inflation and federal interest rates going up, guess what? Interest rates on savings accounts have gone up as well. My ally savings account has gone from a 0.5% interest rate to a 2% interest rate on all the money that I deposit, which is another way to make great passive income. Another passive income idea is number two, invest into a REIT. REIT stands for Real Estate Investment Trust. And I personally have over $100,000 invested into Fundrise, which is a real estate investment trust fund. And I make passive income anytime the real estate in the portfolio appreciates, and I make dividend income every time they collect rental income from the rental properties. And so what I'll do is I'll put a link down to Fundrise down in the description below, and when you use my link, you'll get $100 in shares when you sign up. All right, passive income idea number three is retirement accounts. So what you could do is set up a pre-tax retirement account and then use that retirement account to invest into real estate or invest into the total stock market. Because historically, the stock market, the total stock market has always appreciated as well as the total real estate market. And at the same time, you may be able to get some dividend income every time rental income is collected or every time the stocks could create some extra cash flow. So that's the third passive income idea. Now I have an entire video where I break down my personal passive income portfolio so what I'll do is I'll link that video at the end if you want to check it out after you finish this one moving on to number four I have how to avoid taxes on passive income and really any income you see it's a common belief among many people that avoiding taxes is either a illegal or b something that is reserved for the rich and the wealthy who can afford really expensive accountants and it makes sense because it's often reported that billionaires like warren buffett and jeff bezos and elon musk and president trump have very low effective tax rates i mean just take a look at this screenshot from pro publisha who shows that although jeff bezos wealth grew by 99 billion dollars his effective tax rate was only 0.98 percent yes his true tax rate was less than 1%. Meanwhile, the average American household has an effective tax rate of around 14%. And if you're a small business, the average effective tax rate is even higher at about 20% according to the SBA. And that's just the average federal tax rate. But you also have to take in consideration other taxes like state and local taxes or even self-employment taxes. So how is it that billionaires could have a less than 1% tax rate while we have a 20 to 30% tax rate? Well, the golden rule when it comes to avoiding taxes is to delay your income as much as possible and accelerate your losses. One more time, delay your income and accelerate your losses. And many wealthy people don't take cash unless they absolutely need it. And when they do need it, it's usually during a year where their income is lower, thus they end up in a lower tax bracket and end up paying less taxes overall. And so some of the ways that you can delay your income or accelerate your losses is by maximizing your deductions or by optimizing your legal entity structure if you have a business or doing some retirement planning or using some insurance strategies you could also use some legal tax loopholes or very niche specific strategies like investing into real estate properties for the depreciation. But the key takeaway is that you don't have to pay more in taxes than you need to if you actively create a tax plan or some type of tax strategy, which is what we try to do on this channel all the time. All right, so I hope that Bob enjoyed the call and you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all of that. 
Coming up next, I'm going to link another tax strategy video that is super important for those who are making a lot of income and they want to reduce their taxes. So check that out if you haven't already, and I'll see you over there.